Now we're going to look at some interesting properties of the diagonals of kites. So again, we learned that one diagonal bisects the other diagonal. So um, this diagonal bisects. And it is also an angle bisector. So you actually may not notice that it bisects the diagonal, but I'm going to show it to you in just a second. It does create two congruent uh, triangles. Now we're going to explore what this diagonal does, the one that connects the two congruent angles. So we do want to know one thing. It doesn't create um, congruent triangles. It does create two non-congruent isosceles triangles. So we're going to prove that the two diagonals are actually perpendicular to each other. First, we'll start with our given that these two sides are congruent and that those two sides are congruent. Now I added in point F to make it easier and I'm telling you I'm putting it smack dab in the middle of BD. Alright? So FB is going to be congruent to FD because that's the definition of a midpoint. I put it there so it would be right between. I didn't set it anywhere else so let's see what happens. Now if I create this uh, diagonal AC I can say that AF is congruent to AF by the reflexive property of congruence. Well, you can see that's going to give me side, side, side. And that means that triangle ABF is going to be congruent to triangle ADF. Well, then that means that the corresponding angles need to be congruent. AFB, which is this angle right here, must be congruent to AFD by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Well, I do know that these two angles form a linear pair. And since they're congruent and they're supplementary, they must both be 90 degree angles. Okay, now I'm going to look at this other segment, CF. CF is congruent to CF by the reflexive property. Now, technically I don't know that this is going to be going through F and hitting C, but let's find out. Um, I also know that triangle CFB is going to be congruent to triangle CFD. Why? Well, I have this is congruent to that, this is congruent to that, and this is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Then I can say that CFB, that angle is going to be congruent to CFD by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So these two angles in here have to be congruent. But they also form a linear pair because this is a line for sure. That means that the two angles must be 90 degrees. Well, since all four angles are 90 degrees and they meet at the same point, they must be perpendicular. So the diagonals of a kite are always perpendicular. So we're going to use this um, to look at how we could find the equation of a line that goes through one diagonal given the other. I know that FH is going to bisect this diagonal because this is the one that cuts the kite in half. And here are my two points. So FH must go through the midpoint. So I need to find my X coordinate, which is negative 12. And it's negative 14 plus negative 10 negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. And then I find my y coordinate. 0 plus negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So my midpoint's right in there at negative 12, negative 6. I didn't bother to put my points in the right orientation on the coordinate plane because I don't really need that. I just need to know that this is my line and that points, and that's, that's my segment. And this is the point halfway between. Now I need to find this slope here. Well, the slope of each e is going to be negative 12 minus 0 over negative 10 plus 14 because it's minus negative 14 and I get negative 3 because negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. The perpendicular slope of FH is going to be the negative reciprocal. So I put a 1 underneath the negative 3, flip it and change sign. Now I use my point slope formula using my uh, perpendicular slope going through that midpoint, negative 12, negative 6. Combine like terms, do the, do the distributive property here. 1 third times x times 1 third times positive 12 is positive 4. Subtract 6 from both sides 
and my equation for the diagonal is y equals one third x minus two. So working with diagonals of a kite, um, basically it's important to know that they create two pairs of congruent tri uh, right triangles. So if you position your kite so that the two congruent angles are, hor you know, across from each other horizontally, you're going to have a set of congruent right triangles on top here and on bottom. Some strategies that you can use to solve these, one is that the angles add up to 180. Also, they create pairs of congruent angles. Remember that um, it's going to bisect some angles, so that might be helpful. And the angles at the diagonals are 90 degrees. So you might end up using Pythagorean theorem quite a few times on these. And only one diagonal is bisected to create a pair of congruent segments. Not both, just the one. And it should be the one that makes sense. You cut, we usually think of it as a short one, but it's not always a short one. In this example, I'm showing you angle A is 56 degrees, uh, D is 141, and I want to find FCD and CDF. First of all, I'm going to find all the angles in my kite. Because it's a quadrilateral, they all have to add up to 180. And I know D is 141, which tells me B, uh, angle B is 141. Solving, putting together like terms, and then subtracting 338 from both sides, I get angle C is 32 degrees. But I'm really trying to find these smaller angles, so I'm going to add a diagonal right there. Well, this should be, it doesn't look perfect, it should be bisecting that angle. So instead of 32 degrees, my angle is going to be 16 degrees there. Now I'm going to add my other diagonal. And I know diagonals create a 90 degree um, angles. Well, this is just a triangle here, and I can say that this angle, which is the other one I'm looking for, CDF, these three must add up to 90. So I combine my like terms, subtract 106 from both sides, and I get CDF is 74 degrees. So for further reflection, what does each diagonal create in a kite? So one of them cuts the kite in half, the other one creates isosceles triangles. And you put them together and you have congruent right triangles. What are the slope relationships between the two diagonals of a kite and why? Well, since they're perpendicular, their slope should be negative reciprocals. What kinds of triangles are created by the diagonals of a kite? Well, again, we said one does isosceles triangles, not congruent, and one does congruent triangles. And how did the diagonals behave differently? Again, kind of going back to that previous question.